Have you ever wondered what's inside your Android smartphone? Well, we have too, and so we decided to do a teardown of an Android smartphone and take a look at everything that's inside it. And guess what? You're invited to the party. I'm Akshay from Webomb.com and today we'll open up a Nexus 5X and take a look at its components. We'll be focusing solely on the hardware part of things in a consumer-centric way. Before we dive in, let's talk about some specs. The Nexus 5X is an Android device from 2015 packing a Snapdragon 808 processor, 2GB of LPDDR3 RAM, a 12MP rear and a 5MP front-facing camera both with an f2.0 aperture and 16 or 32GB of eMMC flash storage. So let's open up our phone and take a peek inside. Opening a Nexus 5X involves quite a bit of prying and unscrewing Philips head screws, so bear with us while we attempt to do this. First off, we'll take the SIM tray out and use a piece of thick plastic to pry open the rear case. The case is rather bendy, but as long as you don't bend it too much, it'll come off just fine. Just inside the rear case on the back, we can see the antenna for GPS, NFC, Wi-Fi and MIMO. We also get a look at the 2700 mAh battery which looks removable but it isn't. At least not yet. The connectors are buried underneath and we can't get at them yet. Let's move on. Removing the mid-frame is easy for the most part but it poses one challenge. The mid-frame comes in two pieces attached together at the lower end. So we need to be careful and start prying it up from the bottom. But first, let's unscrew these screws. There are 10 of these so we'll need to be careful not to lose them. We can now pry out the mid-frame from the phone. The mid-frame came out easily enough and it houses the front-facing speaker on the bottom part with the Nexus imprint fingerprint reader piggybacking on the top. The fingerprint reader comes out of the mid-frame quite easily. This is helpful especially if you are encountering issues with recognition which is most probably due to a faulty fingerprint reader. A replacement Nexus imprint fingerprint reader will cost you around $6. Fingerprint readers for other devices will probably have different pricing. Nerd fact, Google claimed the speed of the imprint reader to be 600 milliseconds which is fast enough to completely bypass the lock screen on your Nexus 5X. With the mid-frame out of the way, we finally get a good look at the motherboard. We can't remove it yet. We'll have to disconnect all the ribbon cables first. The front and rear camera, the LCD display and the battery are all connected to the motherboard with ribbon cables, which can be disconnected quite easily. We can also clearly see the dual LED flash and the laser autofocus. The vibration motor is also present here itself. This is the motor that causes the vibration your phone makes when you receive notifications. On the bottom, we can see the USB Type-C port and the headphone jack. The Type-C port is soldered onto the motherboard and can be replaced easily. However, the headphone jack uses spring contacts. We'll remove that soon. The front camera comes out easily, but the rear camera has some adhesive coating on it, which may require a little heating before we can pry it out. However, thanks to the easily removable cameras, if you're having issues with your camera sensor, you can easily get them replaced. Here, we can see both the 12 megapixel rear and 5 megapixel front cameras in all their glory. They really don't look like much, do they? The sensor does lack OIS, but Google claimed that increasing the pixel size from 1.4 micrometers to 1.55 micrometers makes it unnecessary. We'll just take their word for it, I guess. We can now pull the motherboard out of the housing, being careful that none of the ribbon cables get stuck on the motherboard. See the metal plates? They act as heat sinks for the ICs underneath. Removing these metal plates requires quite a bit of heat, so we're going to a qualified technician who can help us get these plates off, and then we'll get right back to this. This side of the motherboard consists of a number of different ICs or integrated circuits. There's a 2GB LPDDR3 RAM module from Samsung with the Snapdragon 808 underneath it. Right above that is the power management IC, which is responsible for managing the power requirements of the phone. On the right, that little chip there is the RISC microcontroller with an audio codec on its right side. Below the RAM, we can see the power amplifier required for LTE connections, a Qualcomm LTE transceiver on its right with the eMMC flash storage on the extreme right. On the bottom of the motherboard is the Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 IC as well to enable fast charging over USB Type-C. Let's flip the motherboard and look at the other side. This one contains a lot of ICs as well. Let's run them down one by one. 
there's a power management IC in the center with the Wi-Fi and MIMO SOC below it. Above the power management IC, we can see the envelope tracking IC. On its right is the GSM power amplifier. There's also an NFC chip on the right and a routing switch further along. The routing switch is responsible for routing your data through the internet. It acts both as a network switch and a router. None of the ICs can be individually replaced, so if any one of them ends up misbehaving, you will have to replace your entire motherboard. The headphone jack on the Nexus 5X also uses spring contacts to connect to the device which means that it's easy to remove and easy to replace in case it stops working properly. So, in case your headphone jack isn't working quite as well as you'd like, you can rest easy that it can be easily replaced. The battery in the Nexus 5X is glued and it takes some amount of prying to get it out. We'll need to be patient and slowly apply pressure from each side to get the battery out of its compartment. Don't use anything sharp near the battery as puncturing the battery can cause it to catch fire and explode. The Nexus 5X uses a 2700mAh lithium-ion battery and as we've just seen, you can replace it if need be. However, unless you absolutely know what you're doing, you should let battery replacements be handled by trained professionals. On the top, we can see the earpiece as well. This too uses spring contacts and can be removed with some amount of prying and pulling. You can try cleaning out the earpiece if you're having trouble during calls. A lot of times such problems are caused by things like dust getting accumulated on the earpiece, so make sure you clean it out and check it before getting a replacement. That's all when it comes to opening up an Android phone. Obviously the method will differ depending on what phone you have, but this video was meant to be something of a starting point for the things you can expect to find inside an Android smartphone along with the common issues they can cause. Well that was basically it, I hope you liked this video and if you did make sure you hit that like button. Also subscribe to our channel for more cool tech videos. That was all from my side, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. After I put this phone back together that is.